Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. Hope you are all well and safe and having a great day. Uh, Procreate has released a new version, 5X. I don't know if it's 5.X or 5X, but it is packed with new features. I am going to show or review six of the features today. I'm not going to uh, cover them all because I can't uh, due to the limitations of, of my iPad. But I'm going to go over most of them. I'm looking at private layers, palette capture and swatch drop, reference companion, pencil filters, gradient maps and selection color fill. And what I intend to do, I'm going to uh, incorporate them all into my workflow to make sort of a, a logical use of them to produce this image that I've done of this hawk and um, uh, go through each of the features one in t one at a time and I'm going to put a index on the screen so if you're only interested in say the pencil filters you can skip to that part of the video or gradient maps you can jump to that so um, let's just get straight into it because there's so much to show you uh, I'm going to show you how to create a private layer you go to the um, spanner tool and we want to insert a file but you need to slide this left and then we get this option that says insert a private file so you select that and then you choose your image and I am going to uh, fit to screen I think this is a new feature it says in the um, notes on, on Procreate site that uh, they have this new snap to grid feature and I've always had trouble inserting an image to size but that's perfect. So if we look at that layer this says private. You know what? I'm going to lock that layer. I do not want anything anything to uh, I'm not, uh, to be draw on it because I've already done this once and I did the drawing on the private layer now I've got a um, studio pen selected I've got black ink and I am going to start tracing <gasps> I'm on the lot layer you see <laughs> that's why I uh, locked that layer and I drew on it before let's get back into this and Am I cheating? Well, uh, it's very rare would, would I do this. If I was doing a pet portrait, I would totally um, cheat. <laughs> I, I would trace a pet portrait, and I have done in the past because I can't get excited. I know people, some people just do nothing else and they're brilliant at it. And, you know, I take my hat off to them because it's not my bag. I am not into doing pet portraits and I would be thinking I try to get this commission out of the bag really quick I know I'll trace it but I'm tracing this for a reason because if you are into making uh, speed paints uh, in procreate you're gonna love this this is right up your street so let's just continue uh, with the tracing and I'll be back in a second So there's my orc uh, pencil drawing. Let's, let's do it, an unveiling. So I'm going to add my private layer. And there it is. So there's a quick drawing um, in Procreate Trace. Now, why did I use a private layer? Well, 
I don't know if you know or not, you can replay your videos in uh, Procreate or the, you can play replay the drawing as a speed paint. So I can choose video here and I can play the time lapse. And look at that. Where's the background gone? That just looks like I'm a really clever artist that doesn't need a background. So that is the private layer new feature in Procreate. Really cool for anybody that uses the Procreate speed paint feature. Um, I like it. I do. I really like it and I probably will use it. But anyway, let's move on and look at the next feature. What I want to show you now is the palette capture and swap drop. I'm going to use this um, photograph to create a color palette. So there's a few ways you can do it. You can um, open up your colors, first of all, and make sure you've got palettes selected. So if you've got the disc selected here, just go to the last option where it says palettes, select that. And then right at the top where it says plus, touch that, it doesn't say plus, there is a little plus sign. And you can create a new palette. So you can create it from a camera. I tried that and I didn't have a lot of success. It might be the camera on my iPad's not very good because it's an old iPad. And you can do it from a file or you can do it from a photo. So files is from images that you would have on the cloud and new uh, from photos is what you've got on your iPad. So I'm going to choose new from photos. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to go to my recents and down here we have my photo. Boom! It's created a color palette from this photograph. Now I know there are 120 pastels in this box but I've only got 30 colors selected there. So you've got to be aware of that, that you're not going to get a full range of colors from a photograph, but it's a really quick way. I guess I can um, rename it. Yeah, so I can call it Sennelier palette because um, this is some Sennelier pastels. In fact, I want to call it pastels. And that is as easy as how you can create your custom palette now. So that's the first bit. I'm going to go back to the gallery. I'm going to open up my bird I drew earlier. I am going to turn this into this layer into a reference. I'm going to lock it because I'm notorious for... Um, drawing on layers that I don't want to create a new layer. Now, it, when I try and drop colors into this, it should reference that image below. So I choose my palettes and if I open them up here, so I've got the colors next to me, I can drag a color, oops, drag a color and fill an area. Obviously, this drawing isn't designed for this technique, but I just wanted to show you because there's going to be gaps in here. But if I sort of take that color, oops, I can fill in a little bit of the wing because I can see that that's filled in and that's filled in. And it's filled it in, obviously, on the separate layer to the, um, to the drawing. So that is the um, swatch drop feature. So let's let's try a different color. So if I wanted to color this uh, leg band in here, the same as the um, other one, I guess it's this color. If I drag that there, you can see we've got a break in the pen. So it's just gonna fill loads of stuff in. So it's not the ideal drawing for that, but it just shows you um, what you can do with the uh, creating um, palettes from a photograph or an image and then using the um, swatch drop 
let's look at the next feature. The reference companion is something I've been waiting for for ages. So to um, take advantage of that, choose the tools icon, select canvas and toggle the reference button. And there we are. You've got a reference image. I've already actually loaded that in. So uh, no, I haven't. This is from the canvas. Now, what's really cool about this is, if I, I, I do like to see a thumbnail of how my work's progressing. So, in this case, I can um, have a thumbnail there. Let's create a new layer. I've deleted those uh, colored layers I did earlier. I can choose my um, palettes, put them there and uh, pick a nice color and let's change the brush let's get a bit uh, funky and i'm going to go in with the drawing brushes yeah and i'm going to go in with eagle orc i've already planned this look come on the brush called eagle and i can see nicely there look let's just put this layer below the pencil layer I can see on my thumbnail how that image is shaping up. So I can choose a different colour, warm it up a little bit around the wing. Uh, even warmer. So I can use it like that just to have um, a second view of what I'm working on because it is nice to have a thumbnail. Uh, quite often I'll see something as a thumbnail and I'll think, oh, that's not, a, a mistake can be totally glaring in the thumbnail, which you missed um, in the uh, full size version of the image. So uh, there's that, there's that option. So I can use the thumbnail as a, a reference to see how my painting's progressing, but what happens if I want to use the reference photo uh, as the source image? Well, then I go to image to import and then select import image. And then I go to my recents or wherever you've got it and select that. Now I've got um, an image. I can resize that one. Need to fill that, and I've got something there. Get a bit bigger. Move that around. You can move it over the top of your uh, image if you like. So I've got a reference image that I can use um, next to uh, the photo now, or next to my drawing. And I used to work uh, by splitting the screen, and I would have to. Uh, choose the photos and split the screen like that and um, go to wherever I got the the image my recents and put it there at the side of it which has worked fine for me for a long long time but now I don't have to do that I can use this feature in uh, Procreate and I like what I also like about it is I can resize that image within size within inside that window which you can't do with a lot of reference uh, features in apps so that's really really cool so i can now use that uh, to to paint this and think okay i can i've got this like nice cool color down here i can wipe that in and, and uh, do that oh and we've got some greens going off here so i can whack a little bit of green in basically just uh, use that that photo as a reference so a nice feature really nice feature but i really like the fact that i can um, look at the actual canvas and see the progress of my painting uh, as i'm going which which to me is uh, 
really really nice look at that so that's um reference image let's move swiftly along to the next feature there's now a new pencil filters feature which is really uh, i thought was really nice when i had a little play around with this because uh, if i go to filters i can say change uh, the U saturation and brightness and I can choose a pencil or a layer option so if I choose layer it's going to affect the complete layer obviously but now this new feature is a pen is the pencil so I can knock say the saturation down so we have a black and white image and I can now uh, go over this layer look and paint and turn off of my hawk into a black and white so it, it transitions from uh, this monochromatic black and white image to uh, the full color version so uh, that's just you know real uh, another excellent feature really and then if i decide that i want to color back in i can oh have i for some reason it's now uh, all purple i can change the brightness of it so everywhere i've painted i can make adjustments Let's put the saturation back up so you can see the U. That's what was going off there. I wonder if you can erase as well. Let's find out. Let's stick the eraser on. Does that go back? Yeah. So you can, if you think you've made a mistake or you've painted too much, you can undo that. So you've now got full control quite like that black and white um, feature on on there and then there's a few more there's a, there's a couple of uh, new features uh, and I like I don't know if this off tone is the chromatic aberration is definitely new and the, the glitch is new so let's just have a look at the chromatic aberration and um, I can paint over that and obviously adjust the amount of effect by sliding the bar at the top and again oops let's just move that out of the way it's only working on this isolated area that i've painted um i quite like the um the off tone effect choose the pencil again and i if i want i can just kind of make the uh, grass as a um, monotone and this is like you would get for printing if I up the scale you can see you get that kind of Andy wall old effect so we've got the full color we can do a screen print version or newspaper version i quite like the screen print i think i might leave it to that and you can fine tune it by painting in there so that is the um pencil filters love them I, I love that i could play around with that play around with that all day so let's look at something else gradient maps is a, a brand new feature and you can find that in the filters so look down here for gradient map 
and we can do it with pencil or we can go with layer this time I'm going to go with layer and you can see that uh, if I choose one of these options they've got it's like having a series of filters we've got this one that's uh, mystic or breeze instant they all give different sort of color effects but how do they work you know what's what happens if you want to make your own is it just sort of offers you a color scheme well that one's quite nice very dark let's create our, our own so if i click on the plus you'll see that we've got um a black at the dark end of the scale and a white at the uh, light bright end and if i if i slide this along you can see more and more of the image goes into solid black if i go the other way with the white and drag that more of the image becomes lighter and lighter and lighter that could be quite a cool way of cleaning up um an image that is probably that you've scanned in that you want to uh, tidy up a bit anyway i could if i want change that color by clicking on it and let's have our dogs as a dark purple okay so now again i can slide along there and we've got sort of purple a monochrome going through to white i can sort of click in at the mid-tones and add a new color so we could say put in some yellow but we could let's take it a bit further up so that we're still retaining our purples in fact, just slide that up a little bit and a few of the yellows so you can create your own um, gradient map and let's give this a name purple and yellow so when I click done it will save that and there we have it as our new uh, selection in the uh, gradient library so I can flip between these and go back to my purple and yellow gradient map. So that's the one I want. And I click on apply. I guess that's how do I come out of this? I guess I just uh, click off that. And there you go. That is the gradient map. Um, I quite like that. I've never really um, understood gradient maps too well and, and looking at it in Procreate really sort of um, highlighted to me how to uh, how to use it so I really like that gradient maps Got one more thing I want to look at and that is the um, selection color fill so let's get into that the selection color fill is fairly straightforward. I'm going to create a new layer for this one. Basically, all you do, you go to the um, selection tool, make sure you've got color fill highlighted at the bottom, and you can draw rectangles and uh, other shapes. But I want to do the freehand shape. I don't want it feathered or anything. And I can just draw, well, I suppose I want to choose a color. So I think I'm going to go with this greeny color here. And I'm just going to draw a, a sort of a, a random shape like that. Touch the little circle. And boom. It's filled in. And that all that's all there is to it. It's as simple as that. So I can now... Um, drag that layer underneath my other layers but I need some white don't I really 
So let's go, let's create another layer here. Let's select a white color. I don't think there's one in the palette, so I'm gonna to have to uh, choose it from the canvas and um, <clears throat> do the same again. Make sure I've got the free hand, the color fill. I'm just gonna draw around my hawk as neat as I can. I can't use uh, any other color fill option because obviously um, there are uh, too many gaps in my original drawing. There we go. It will just sort of fill ev absolutely everything. And I'm not being too neat, really. And I just click on the little dot. And I've got my white drawn in. It isn't quite white there, is it? So if I click off there, it's a little bit off-white. So I could take the eraser and just um, take that bit out. And there we have it. Um, not very neat that, is it? So I'm not happy with that green. I'm gonna blur that out a bit, I think. So I'm gonna select the green layer. I'm gonna to go to filters, choose Gaussian blur, choose layer, slide to adjust it says, there we go. There, I like it. Done. I don't like that green, so I'm going to change. I'm not sure I'm on the right layer on the green yet. I'm going to go to filters, change U, saturation, and brightness, choose layer, and I'm going to go for. I want to try and get it in as a purple. Not quite so bright, a little bit darker, perhaps. Less saturation. A bit brighter. Keep that sort of purple tone. There we go. And that will do. So that's it. Uh, looking at some of the main features in the new release uh, 5X of Procreate. There are a few other things as well. Looking at the um, App Store, it says that there's something called Face Paint which I would have really have liked to try where you can take your image and sort of map it onto a face. But unfortunately, my old version of the iPad um, doesn't support, because I've got an original iPad, it doesn't support this feature, unfortunately. Uh, there's something called Scribble where you can sort of uh, draw in text and it converts it to uh, sort of font text, I believe. Uh, I can't try that one either. And then there's uh, quick menus and blur brushes. Brushes, I'll, I'll have to look at them separately, I think. So that's sort of uh, some of the main features covered. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, a big thumbs up as always. Is much appreciated. Um, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I've got loads of videos like this uh, covering Critter and Procreate and Art Rage and lots of other apps. Hopefully, I'll see you all in the next one. Don't forget everybody, take care, stay safe and stay sane and keep painting. Bye.